Yesterday, I got the perfect question on one of my videos because right now I'm actually in Tampa, Florida and I live in Orlando. Milo said, hey buddy, one thing I would love to see is how you run your logistics. Like how do you plan which store to start at and which to end? I don't know if you have it down to an art. Thank you. I don't exactly have it down to an art completely, but I think I do a pretty good job. We're spending the night in our van tonight because Carissa has a girls night with some of her college friends. So let's go over the eight things that I look for when creating a route and then we'll actually create a route here and then go source a couple stores to see how well our planning went. I opened up the door to let some light in so hopefully it doesn't get too loud but here are the eight things that I go over. The first one is to be time sensitive. Don't go overboard like I do a lot of times and plan to be able to go for way longer than you might actually be able to. Now that I'm doing this full time it's not as big of an issue because I have two full days that I give myself to resell. If I don't finish my route on the first day I can just go back the second day so sometimes I'll plan a route that's longer than I might need just because I might run out of my budget first in which case I would be done shopping. But when I used to work at a bank while I was starting this I decided to just do small amounts of stores maybe four or five stores after after work at least knowing that I have a plan for that first little bit and completing it is a good feeling the second thing I try to do is get diversity up front and that means going to different types of stores at the beginning I try not to just go to four Rosses in a row I'll try to go to one of each of them because like I talked about in one of my recent sourcing videos stores go through seasons or at least that's what I've noticed where sometimes Rosses are amazing for Amazon and I'll walk out spending over a hundred dollars at every single Ross then other times I'll get skunked the other reason this is important is because stores have the same inventory across multiple different stores I'll find so often that if I'm looking for say moleskins like I was in one of my recent vlogs I'll find two Batman moleskins at one Marshalls and then I'll find two Batman moleskins at the next Marshalls because they spread out their inventory over a bunch of different stores so if you go to one of each of these stores you'll be able to tell which might be the best stores to continue going if you have a limited time period or in more extreme cases something that we'll get to in a second the third thing is gonna be pretty obvious and that's to hit as much as you can in a tight radius I don't think anyone's really asking whether or not you should try to go to as many stores as you can in a small area because it'll take less time but just in case you were wondering try to go to as many stores as you can in a small space so it takes you less time because you don't want to be out there all day long you got a life to live it is raining and I didn't realize that because I've been cooped up in my van but the fourth tip is to do right turns this is what UPS has decided to have all of their drivers do because it's a lot faster to make right turns because you don't have to wait at nearly as many stop signs or stoplights there's actually one spot where instead of just crossing the street I'll make a right turn go hit up more stores and then cross the street and hit up another store on the right going down a little bit further south the more right turns you make the faster you'll end up doing this but it'll only save you a negligible amount of time so if it's between driving four miles in order to make one right turn and just crossing the street you might just want to cross the street but if it's pretty close make that right turn the fifth tip is to be okay changing your plans as you go especially after you get done with that second step of making sure that you diversify early in the beginning if you realize that Marshalls isn't giving you anything and you found say a bunch of top-end soccer cleats at a Ross and then you went to another Ross that was in that first early bit and they had a bunch of them too maybe you just want to go to a bunch of Rosses and round all those up before other people snatch them. that's actually not a hypothetical that's something that I did that I showed in a different video and if you find something early in your route has a clearance sale going on and there's a couple of them in your area like the Academy that I went to while I was shooting a reselling vlog that takes the case for the most that I've ever spent you might just want to go to the next Academy like I did and kind of push aside the rest of your route because you'll see that there is so much more profit to be made way faster that's the name of the game making as much money as you need or want as fast as you can so you can get to the rest of your life or your other business goals and the sixth thing is to be okay if you don't get to everything not everybody can be as perfect as me at planning and if you're as perfect as me you're probably pretty bad at it still what you're gonna be creating is just a guide for you don't kick yourself if you don't get to all of it it's okay I don't know if there's ever been a time that I've strictly stuck to exactly what I've laid out before I honestly forgot what thing we're on but the next one is to make it repeatable especially if you're not doing what I'm doing today which is just being in one spot one time but you're leaving from the same location every time like your house or apartment make whatever route you plan a repeatable route and maybe try to find one two or three of them that are close to you that you can do on a weekly bi-weekly or monthly basis I tend to go to places one time per month which doesn't mean it's the right thing to do but I have two different routes that I take you probably heard me call them the north loop and the south loop in Orlando and I'll go to one of them over my two-week period that I give myself to resell and I'll go to another one over the next two-week period because I only try to spend about three days per month reselling and the rest of the time I work on YouTube channels so make it repeatable and then repeat it at whatever frequency is good for you and having that planning will make your sourcing much easier for you because you won't have to think about where you're going you'll already have that route so this number tip is to not be afraid to go far now you don't have to go far all the time but if you don't have a lot of stuff close to you and you want to make this viable for you you might have to go a little bit of a distance at the same time if you do have a lot of stuff close to you like I do 
it's at least good to know what's far from me. Like, I know that there are four academies near me in Orlando that I like to go source at, but there's one that's a little bit further. That's by some other stores I know. Actually, there's two of those. Worst case scenario, I go to them if I'm not finding anything else in my other normal routes. Best case scenario, Academy is having store-wide clearance sales, and I can go to all the academies near me and then hit up those other two to make a lot more profit because I know that they're there. So at least knowing what's in a 50 to 100 mile radius from you will be helpful even if you never have to go there. It's good to have that knowledge. All right, I actually think that's eight. So let's sit down real quick and make this plan from where I am right now, which is at a Chipotle somewhere in Tampa. I honestly don't even know where I am right now. Chris has just told me to follow the GPS and I did. These are our chairs and desks before we actually build out the van. I am currently in this parking spot. So what we're gonna do from here is just zoom out a little bit from this location, let's find a route to source. What I used to do is actually I would look for all the stores and then I would just write them on a map. What I'm gonna do instead is actually try to overlay the maps in Photoshop. So let's start with just a blank map of where we are. The beauty of this is you're not gonna have to memorize all these locations. You just have to know where everything is and then you can still use like Google Maps or whatever. So stores that we're gonna end up looking up, Ross, Marshalls, Burlington, Walmart, TJ Maxx, Ollie's Bargain Market, and Academy. I'm pretty sure they don't have any Academy here. But we'll look it up. I know some people do Dollar Tree. I don't. I might check it out soon. But those are the ones that I've been able to make all of my money pretty much reselling from. Start with Ross. We only have really these two Rosses. There's a lot of Rosses over here in the Clearwater area. There's a couple Rosses over in Brandon. But really all we got here is this Ross and this Ross. If I was actually living in this area and sourcing it, I would probably be looking at a map that looks more like this. I have one route that was over this way where I would just hit up all of this side of Tampa and one route that was kind of looking like this. All right, change of plans. We're going to do north of me. So we're going to do all of this kind of west chase area because we do have a lot more Rosses there. That kind of goes back to looking a little bit further than you might want to look. It would have been nice to stay in this area. Honestly, that area is probably really small, but I don't know my way around this area. And we're just going to look at these Rosses. Lake Fern, all the way through this peninsula, over to 301 and up 75. Just take that. Those are all the Rosses. And I'll throw that in Photoshop. Let's look at the Marshalls. A couple Marshalls. So there's one further down here that we'll hit up. Burlington. Next, we have TJ Maxx. We can make a good loop out of just this area right here. Walmart. Oh, there's one right on top of us. We gotta filter out the Walmart neighborhood markets, so we're just gonna look at super centers. And if someone's in this area, make this money. Ollie's Bargain Market? Oh, we got one. Okay. Academy. Just up back in Orlando. Perfect. So we got all of our stores now. As you can tell, I do not know this area at all. So what I'm gonna do here is line up each of these on top of each other and then see where everything would be, and then I'll be able to create my route from there. But honestly, looking at this area, there's a lot of great stores to resell. If Carissa ever wants to come down here to spend a week with some of her old friends, I can come fish and resell and we can have a good old time. Honestly, if you're not like proficient in a photo editing software, it's probably gonna be easiest for you to just take a map and write on it. But I'm gonna try to line this up and hope that it works. If it doesn't work, then I'm dumb. So this is what our map looks like now. So maybe you don't want to do this. I'm gonna redo this, same everything, just on a new map. And I'll draw that out so then we can actually take a look at it and have it make sense. All right, so we are finally able to actually map this out in a way that is readable. But we are right here, that little blue dot. So let's create a plan for us to go out. And just for reference, I looked up what the mileage kind of is. From where we are here to Ollie's is nine miles. So if we were to do this full loop, we'd probably get about 60 miles. On average, I'm about 60 to 80 miles that I drive any given day to go reselling, depending on how far I have to go and how many stores I have to hit to meet my budget. So let's just create a plan for if we were going out all day. And the friends that we're meeting with are kind of down in this south area, so we'll probably actually end up being south here. If we lived here, we would have a couple options. And what I would end up doing if I had a lot of time in the day is to go from here and start north. Obviously, there's a lot that we're not seeing on this map over on this side and then over on this side as well. And even just as I was looking at, there were so many stores that were probably actually going to cut off this Marshalls because we would put that in another loop going all the way down this way because there's so many stores over there. And we could also probably head up this way and do another loop over in Clearwater. We're not going to worry about any of that. And honestly, this is a decent amount of stores for a full day of reselling. I get to on average 20 to 30 stores any given day if I'm going out for a full day. So this would be pretty much a full day's load worth of reselling and probably one of my loops if I lived here. So if we start from where we are here, obviously we go to this Walmart first because that's where we're at. And then I would head up this way, up around these roads, hit up 580 and go to this TJ Maxx because that's on the right first. So I would go there rather than Ross. The other benefit of that is after we're done hitting up the TJ Maxx, we can come down to Ross and then leave Ross and take a right up this road here. And then we'll come over here, go to this Ollie's and this Walmart because they're right next to each other. And then we would have to take a left because I would want to come up here as well, all the way to this Ross 
and then keep going down Citrus Park or whatever this is to this Walmart right here. So that alone hits a couple different rules. We're trying to make as many rights as possible. We're hitting these tight radiuses. And then we're also getting a decent amount of diversity. Four different stores in probably the first couple hours of reselling. If we really weren't finding anything at any of these, instead of heading up this way to the Ross and Walmart, we could actually keep going down here and hit up this Marshalls and Walmart. That way we could see if Marshalls would be a good store for us to go to. But instead of that, we're actually just going to stay with this Ross and then Walmart. And then after we hit up the Walmart, we can just take this left and head all the way up here to Ross and TJ Maxx. After we hit up the Ross and the TJ Maxx, keep moving along, I would go to the Walmart and Ross here to the Ross, Walmart, and Burlington down here, and then we would take another right and keep going back this way and hit up this Marshalls and Walmart. At this point, if you're having a good day, you might actually be done sourcing, so you wouldn't have to worry about finishing up at this Ross and Walmart, and if you weren't having that good of a day, but Ross wasn't great for you or Walmart wasn't great for you, instead of going to this Ross and Walmart, you have a couple options. You can come straight down 580 here, and then you'll hit a TJ Maxx there, and then a Marshalls and a Burlington right here, and then another Walmart. The same way you don't have to go to Walmart and Marshalls, you can just keep going down to Walmart and Ross if Marshalls wasn't doing anything for you, or Walmart wasn't, or Ross was doing amazing. It's hard when you have pretty ideal circles and then just a couple sitting in the middle here that you don't really know what to do with. And so that's where you can kind of make a game time decision when you get to that point. Now if I was in this area and I didn't have a lot of time to source, this area of Tampa is going to be a little more congested than this area, I believe. If you're from Tampa and I'm wrong, you can yell at me in the comments, that's fine. But I would probably actually end up going south and going to this TJ Maxx and then to the Marshalls in Burlington and the Walmart. Now, I'm a big fan of Ross and I don't like not going to Ross's so that would be a little unfortunate but you get two Walmarts which are a pretty good store you would get a lot of diversity then especially if say this was a day after work that you could go and the next day you head off you can go check out these stores and see kind of what the inventory layout looks like for this week that way you could see if Walmart TJ Maxx Marshalls or Burlington would be good and you can decide to go on this loop which is very Walmart and Ross heavy or maybe there's a lot of Marshalls in this area or a lot of Burlingtons in this area. You'll be able to choose one of the other loops depending on what you find there. So as much as it pains me that we're not going to get to a Ross today, let's follow that second loop and go to this Walmart first and then come back down here to TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Burlington, and then this other Walmart. It is 740 now, so we really got to get on it because I'm pretty sure TJ Maxx closes at 930 and Marshalls closes at 9. Let's try to make some money. Oh dang, that would have been awesome. If that whole section was clearance. This was right next to the door though, so hopefully it's good stuff and not picked over. It is interesting, this is a lot of stuff that I don't see at my normal stores. I found my first win. It seems like it's probably overpriced on Amazon compared to like what you would be able to find in a store, but obviously you're paying for the convenience of it. And the other benefit is that there's no FBA listings right now. Everything is fulfilled by seller. So if I pick these up for buck fifty and I get back $3.33 on each one, I'll get pretty much the buy box for most people, especially if they're prime, and this is the keep a chart. And it's selling pretty decent. It's interesting to see what's on clearance here versus what's on clearance at home. Y'all ever get frustrated like this? $29.89, get back 19 bucks, $10. But you got one little rip, so now I can't even sell it. Brutal. I'm frowning, you can't tell. Man, I was in there a lot longer than I wanted to be. I had to grab something for the van. I had to get something for my camera. 8.30 now, I don't think we're going to be able to make it to Marshall's. We'll still try to get to TJ Maxx, potentially that second Walmart, but we might not have time. We could just pretend like we did it and made a lot of money, and it'll be our little secret. So don't tell anyone, but I may have just looked at our plans and realized that I went to the wrong store. So we're going to skip TJ Maxx, I guess, especially because they close at the same time as this Marshalls. But I prefer Marshalls anyways. That just goes to show you almost never go to plan, even when it's only freaking five stores. We got the Burlington right over there, and then we'll hit up that last Walmart if we have time and Chris doesn't call me to pick her up yet. No shoes, and that's one of the things I was really hoping for here. Nice soccer shoes. Yikes. Not great, but... That's not out of step with the Walmarts back in Orlando. Gonna hit up the Burlington, and I think Chris is actually finishing up. She's been texting me a little bit more. So that might be the end of it for us tonight. Hopefully, we can spend a decent bit more money, buy a couple things that might be stocked up here that aren't stocked in Orlando. And then I'm really interested to see what the difference is when I get back home, because I'm gonna be reselling on Monday. It's Friday today. It honestly hasn't seemed all that different, but we'll see if everything's changed. All right, last chance here. Let's try to get that $100 in total spent. The last time I was at a Burlington on one of these sourcing trips, I found a bunch of nice soccer cleats. Hopefully we can do that again. Hopefully we can buy some Skull Candy headphones that I've been trying to replenish for months now. There are a bunch more of these type of cleats. And some of the indoors. I think I looked up some turf ones last time, not the indoors, but they're $35. So they're a little expensive. I'm going to pick these up because I don't have any of these in a size 9, which is my size and the most popular size. But they do sell a decent bit. I'm not going to buy any of the other ones, which there are a lot of. Pretty full cart, but that's because I haven't checked out most of the stuff yet. This is the only thing for sure that I know right now. I have a feeling there will be like maybe one or two other things. Two more. But this one could be like a 150, 200% return, which is pretty sweet. Found some more shoes in the women's and kids sections, actually, that are really profitable. And then one of these. I feel like it's a sick joke. I've been finding one of those at every Burlington. And only one. 
All I'm saying is we asked for a hundred bucks and Burlington delivered. Honestly, not bad. Just over two hours, just under $200 spent, and we should make about 100% return on investment on all of that. They didn't really know where I was, and if we had a lot longer to go, we'd be able to actually fulfill our plan. I do spend $1,500 every two weeks on reselling, and that's going to start this upcoming Monday. But all of that's going to be in another video that you can watch right here if it's out yet. Otherwise, check out this playlist where I have all of my sourcing vlogs. Or you can watch this video, which is the latest video that I posted, and I don't even know what it is as I'm talking right now. Stay smart.